but this is a prince my krishna wears a peacock feather on his head this krishna is wearing a gorgeous crown my krishna wears a simple yellow uh, garment and he is dressed with royal robes my krishna wears a forest flower garland and he is wearing all this uh, gorgeous jewelry and ornaments my krishna carries a flute in his hand and he is carrying weapons in his hands so in this way uh, radharani felt dissatisfied she was she didn't feel satisfied seeing krishna in there and krishna also it became so excited seeing the residence of vrindavan after such a long time and we can see how krishna actually feels just by seeing gopkumar huh? i mean what kind of emotion he started to feel so what to speak of when he saw shrimati radharani and that due to that emotion Uh, Krishna's eyes bloomed like two fully bloomed lotuses. His face lit up with a bright smile, and his hands were stretched forward to embrace those residents of Vrindavan. And that is Lord Jagannath. So Radharani didn't feel happy to see Krishna in that way as a prince because she knows Krishna. who is a cowherd boy in vrindavan that has been explained in chaitanya charitamrita chaitanya mahaprabhu was dancing in front of lord jagannath's chariot and he was singing one song an apparently mundane love song which means ja ko maro haro shoye bohi barasta the one who stole my heart uh, today he is my lord today he is here with me sa chaitra khapa ste chon milito maloti surabhaya prora kadamba nila the same spring night the fragrance of maloti flower is blowing uh, the wind is carrying the maloti flower from the the kadamba grove shacho ibashmi i am the same personality surata vyaparo lila bidho who is who is who is very expert in loving relationship but reba rodho shi beto shi toru tale cheto samut kanthate my heart is hankering to go back to the bank of reba river under the betashi trees so nobody could understand why chaitanya mahaprabhu in front of jagannath was singing that song apparent love song uh, only sarup damodar knew the understood that only sarup damodar knew the meaning and later on after rathayatra one day chaitanya mahaprabhu went to meet rupa goswami and at that time rupa goswami went to take bath and mahaprabhu was waiting and he saw on the ceiling of his hut there was a ta- palm leaf so he out of curiosity pulled out and he saw generally those days there was no paper they used to write on palm leaves and so on that uh, in beautiful handwriting a verse is written uh, the verse says dear friend priya krishna sahachari kurukshetra milita my dear friend i met krishna in kurukshetra and i am the same radha and we met and but my heart is hankering to go back to the bank of jamuna mono me kalindi tato bipino sprihayati the kali i want my 
my my heart wants to go back to the bank of kalindi in the forest of vrindavan which is filled with the fifth note of krishna's flute fifth note of krishna's flute madhura murali panchama jushe so uh, this is the actual meaning of that song chaitanya mahaprabhu in the mood of shrimati radharani is seeing krishna <laughs> that i met krishna in kurukshetra but my heart is not content in seeing him in this way my heart wants to go back to vrindavan on the bank of jamuna in the forest that where the whole atmosphere is filled with the fifth note of krishna's flute so <clears throat> chaitanya mahaprabhu was surprised to read that <laughs> so he showed it to others when rupa goswami came back he slapped him affectionately on his back and he told sarup damodar sarup how did rupa rek understood my mind how did rupa understand did un, how did rupa understand my mind and rupa goes uh, sarup damodar said that who can ever understand your mind unless he receives your mercy so you must you must have bestowed your mercy upon roop that he could understand that and mahaprabhu admitted yes that's true roop is very very dear to me so this is the mystery of jagannath ratha jatra radharani met krishna after a long separation of 100 years but she was not happy and the residents of vrindavan who were present there they could understand radharani's heart so what did they do they got hold of krishna's chariot along with the horses and started to pull the chariot towards vrindavan and that is rathajatra festival krishna is being taken from kurukshetra to vrindavan now and the point that i was trying to make here in this context the news the queen of the especially rukmini devi the chief queen became worried krishna went to kurukshetra he was supposed to come back what happened he didn't come back and she got the news that the residents of vrindavan has kidnapped krishna and it's a great crime to kidnap somebody is a big crime and kidnapping not an ordinary person kidnapping the prince so she took the army the female army she has <laughs> she took the army raided vrindavan and arrested the brajabasis to be punished such a crime you have kidnapped the prince and <clears throat> now they have been arrested now they have to be judged so the judgment is going on and their point actually the residents of vrindavan their pleader is lalita devi and braj and dwarkavashi queens pleader lawyer is narad muni the discussion is taking place contest is going on uh, the legal battle and the brajavas has pointed out that kidnapping takes place when one is taken against his will kidnapping kidnapping is when one is uh taken we against his will but krishna was wanting to come to vrindavan we simply assisted him we did not kidnap him we actually assisted him to come to vrindavan and rukmini devi then admitted which we also found uh, before in the last chapter of the first part uh, that rukmini devi admitted 
that yes during the daytime Krishna is always absent minded as if his mind is somewhere else his mind is not with him his mind is somewhere else and at night in a sleep Krishna actually goes somewhere else and he calls out to the cows there the cowherd boy is there his parents there his girlfriends there so Rukmini Devi admitted yes uh, Krishna all Krishna although Krishna is in Dwarka but Krishna's heart is in Vrindavan during the day he is absent-minded because his heart is not there in Dwarka his heart is in Vrindavan and at night Krishna goes to Vrindavan in sleep so that pastime actually pointed out that how the recit the Vrindavan is actually then yeah then the point actually came up Rukmini Devi questioned that Dwarka is the height of of opulence like everything is available there so what is what is there in Vrindavan that uh, Krishna doesn't want to be in Dwarka but wants to come to Vrindavan although Dwarka is the height of opulence the Vaikuntha's opulence is perfectly manifest uh, in its ultimate perfection in Dwarka but still Krishna as if something is not there that Krishna is hankering for so what is there in Vrindavan which is apparently just a forest and what does Krishna do like a cowherd boy he plays with his friends and tends the cows so then she was told my dear lady my dear my honorable queen actually this land of Vrindavan is made of Chintamani uh, Shriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kalpata Rubo. this forest of Vrindavan is Kalpa Vriksha the forest of Kalpa Vriksha Kalpata Rubo. Dhruma Bhumish Chintamani Ganamai Toyam Amritam here the water is nectar and all these gopis are actually Lakshmi's Lakshmi Sahasra Sata Samrama Sevgomana but like although Vrindavan has the opportunity to have all the opulence because what to speak of forest of Kalpa Vrikshas one Kalpa Vriksha can fulfill all desires what to speak of millions of cows one cow a surabi cow can fulfill all the desires the land of chintamani one chintamani can fulfill or bring all the opulence but although they can have all the opulence but all they want is krishna their only want is Krishna they don't want anything else <laughs> so that is why Vrindavan is beyond Dwarka in Dwarka the opulence is manifest but in Vrindavan opulence has become insignificant compared to the love so that is why Vrindavan is Vrindavan <laughs> so that's what <coughs> Narad Muni is mentioning here in that Braja Bhumi the Lord's opulences have visibly achieved their final perfection the ultimate perfection of opulence is not in display of opulence but in total neglect of that opulence <laughs> and what is there in Vrindavan in Vrindavan there is Krishna's sweetness the sweetness of his pastimes sweetness of his mercy sweetness of his beauty 
Rupamadhari, Leela Madhari, and the sweetness of the splendor of his pastime, Leela Madhari, and sweetness of his excellent qualities, and the sweetness of his subservience to his devotees. In Vrindavan, the sweetness is that Krishna has become subservient to his devotees. In Vaikuntha, all the way up to Vrinda, uh, Dwarka, Krishna is being worshipped by everyone. But in Vrindavan, Krishna has become subordinate to the residents. So that is the special sweetness of Vrindavan. So then Narad Muni explained the same thing uh, that we just discussed. He is saying, in the land of Braja, any tree with any of its parts, not the tree itself, just any part of the tree, can fulfill all desires of anyone. The, just the leaf of that Kalpa Briksha can fulfill any desire of anyone. And that's how Krishna's opulence has become uh, sub subdued in Vrindavan. And then he was, his Narada started to describe, look, Putana came to kill Krishna, a demoness in disguise, came to kill Krishna. But just because she came and treated Krishna pretending to be his mother, like a mother, wanted to give her breast to feed Krishna. Just because of that, Krishna gave her the position of a mother. Although she came to kill him, but because she came pretending like a mother, Krishna gave her uh, that uh, liberation in the spiritual world, like position of a mother. Then, her family members like Agasura and Bakasura being killed, the, although they came into Krishna as an enemy, they also got the, they also got the uh, ultimate spiritual perfection. Then Narada described all the wonderful pastimes of Krishna. See how Mother Jashoda treated Krishna and how Krishna reacted. Mother Jashoda wanted to bind. Krishna was a naughty boy. So Mother Jashoda decided to chastise him. With a stick in her hand, uh, she was chasing Krishna. My, you naughty boy, I'm going to catch you and give you a good lesson. Teach you a good lesson. Then she binds him with a rope, with a mortar. Supreme Personality of Godhead is being bound. Uh, but bound by what? Uh, bhakti baddham. Bound by devotion. Not by the ropes. By the, by the, by her devotion. And Krishna's beauty is so amazing that even the animals, birds, bushes, creepers and trees all become ecstatic. They become ecstatic. Trees become ecstatic seeing Krishna's beauty. As the trees see Krishna, what happens? They all become filled with flowers. That's how the trees express their ecstasy. They start to pour honey as a display of their ecstasy. <clears throat> and this is the same point that I mentioned, is also mentioned by Narad Muni here. 
seeing Krishna's beauty, uh, people, that means his devotees, Utkars Brahma, the creator of the eyelids, uh, because it blinks. What kind of creation is? What's the use of that eyelid? Uh, it all it does is obstructs our sight of Krishna. Brahma, you are uh, totally incompetent in your job. And they praised Indra. Oh, look, Indra is so fortunate that he has thousands eyes. <laughs> With those thousands eyes, Krishna, Indra can see Krishna. I wish I also had thousands eyes like Indra. <laughs> Although these eyes of Indra was a curse, but here they are considering that to be a benediction for him. And uh, and they, they wished, the residents of Vrindavan wished that their, all their senses could become eyes. <laughs> we have five senses, but there was no, no need for other senses. There is no need for nose, no need for skin, no need for ears, uh, no need for tongue. Let all these senses become eyes so that you can see Krishna. That is how wonderful Krishna's beauty is and that's how enchanted they become. Uh, by Krishna's beauty. <clears throat> and that is how Krishna's quality always appear newer and newer. The devotees experience newer and newer joy. Anandam buddhi vardhanam pratipadam. In this way, Krishna's pastimes excites them. What no one before had ever done, what he himself had never done under any pretext or in any circumstances, and what till then had been impossible for anyone, all this he did in Vrindavan during his all attractive childhood pastimes. What the Lord himself had never done before, anywhere, those activities had been enacted by the Lord in his childhood pastime. Whose heart would not be stolen when he has drunk even once through his ear holes the nectar of all those pastimes. Like, oh, what happens when one properly listens to Krishna's pastimes? Just by uh, hearing about those pastimes. What to speak of seeing those pastimes? Just hearing those pastimes uh, that enters through the ears and what it does? Steals the heart. How Krishna steals the heart uh, has been described in one such pastime, in one such activity in Vrindavan. In Braj, a newly married girl came from some other place. Some other place she came to Vrindavan because she got, one cowherd boy got married to one girl from some other place. So she came to Vrindavan and <clears throat> so in the morning when Krishna was going to the forest, uh, she, uh, the, all the elderly members of the family decided not to let her see Krishna because they are afraid that if she saw Krishna, her heart will be stolen. <laughs> so in this way, Krishna steals everyone's heart. So what they did, they blocked all the windows, they closed all the doors so that she cannot see Krishna. But while Krishna was going, he, played his, he was playing his flute. Although she was not allowed to see Krishna, but Krishna, the sound of Krishna's flute entered through her ears. And her heart got stolen. So when her heart got stolen, 
what will happen to somebody if the heart is stolen no heart means no consciousness <laughs> so she became like a zombie <laughs> she just stood there like a zombie now her heart is stolen so people there elderly people of the family tried to shake him up to bring her bring her back to her senses and then finally they gave her a bucket and and the ropes to go to the well and get water so they thought that this action will bring her to her senses so they sent her to the well to get water and this girl went to the well but what did she do she put the rope around her neck instead of tying the rope tying the bucket with the rope she put the rope around her neck and she was about to go down to the well so everyone became so worried so they got hold of her and pulled her out of the well so this is what happens when one's heart gets stolen by hearing the sound of krishna's flute which is non different again from the sound of krishna's past times <clears throat> so yeah, when you go to braja be careful and therefore rupa goswami said that if you have any attachment to your family and friends don't go near keshi ghat don't go near keshi ghat because that huh, that that uh, cowherd boy huh, the 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 lord of the gopi's hearts huh, will steal your heart and you will become totally useless and you will lose all interest for anything else you also will become like a zombie <laughs> so <clears throat> so that is what happens when one comes across krishna of vrindavan so then he describes narad muni described all the different pastimes of krishna in detail how krishna killed trinavarta uh, krishna was a little child he was on his mother's lap drinking his mother's milk and then all of a sudden mother jashoda felt that oh the boy the baby became so heavy so she couldn't carry him any more so she placed him on the ground krishna knew trinavarta was coming as a storm and if he was on his mother's lap then his mother may be in trouble because trinavarta may carry him along with his mother therefore krishna became heavy and made mother jasoda drop him on the ground and then trinavarta came that terrible uh, storm terrible whirlwind and took krishna away little child who was on his mother's lap but what and trinavarta took him to a great height and he decided that now from that height he would drop krishna and this is how it kill him but krishna just put you know, naturally he is carrying him so he put his arm around trinavarta's neck so when it reached the height where trinavarta was about to drop him krishna just tightened his grip and trinavarta felt it's like a vice coming becoming smaller and smaller that grip is becoming smaller and smaller trinavarta tried to get rid of him he couldn't rather he started to become choked he couldn't breathe he was choked he lost all his strength and from that height he fell and that also he fell on a big boulder and he was uh, he was gone <laughs> so this is how krishna played his past times this is how krishna killed one after another demons in vrindavan 
so i don't want to uh, <coughs> go through all those pastimes because you have read them in shrimad bhagavatam or you can read them or another thing how many of you have brihad bhagavatam rita at home how many of you do not have brihad bhagavatam rita at home so how many of you want to have brihad bhagavatam rita how many of you want to have this brihad bhagavatam rita and uh, see how wonderful this scripture is and i tell you i am just giving it giving this nectar in bits and pieces so what kind of relish you will how he will derive by reading it yourself so get the brihad bhagavatam ritam and please read it the bengali translation is also available not from our uh, temple but in goriamart they are available how many of you want to get brihad bhagavatam brihad bhagavatam ritam in bengali huh? okay so when you go to mayapur or calcutta you can get them from goriamart temple so then narad muni uh, after describing all these past times uh, narad muni or the specialty about those past times not just those past times but the specialty of those past times then narad muni said Uddhav is the very best among all the devotees of personality of Godhead because he is so much absorbed in glorifying the dust of the gopi's lotus feet. Uddhav is the best devotee of the Lord because he is so much absorbed in glorifying the dust of the gopi's. So that has been described in Shrimad Bhagavatam when Uddhav went to Vrindavan and saw the love of the gopis uddhav used to feel sort of proud that he was the greatest devotee of krishna Krish that some tinge of pride was there not really like he had some feeling that people say that he is the greatest devotee in dwarka and so forth but when he saw that love of the gopis for krishna he felt so humbled then he wished that he could become a blade of grass in vrindavan in the forest of vrindavan vrindavane kimopi gulma taro shadhi nam he desired gulma a bush taru a, a tree o shadhi a a, 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 for, a grain bearing plant so in brihad bhagavatam ritam uh, a question actually was raised sanatan goswami gave his commentary of brihad bhagavatam sometimes i mentioned about that also but in this point the question actually came up that why did uddhav want to become a, a blade of grass or a bush or uh, a creeper so that he can get the dust of the gopis lotus feet so that he could get the speck of dust from the lotus feet of the gopis so the question came in that respect then if he wanted to get the dust of the gopis then he should rather be on the street because that is where people walk if one want to have the dust then one should be on the street and the answer to that was no when the gopis hear krishna's flute the sound of krishna's flute they become so ecstatic they lose themselves in such a way that they do not have any un, any cons consideration where is the road and where is the forest and it has been said the chances of getting their dust in the forest or in the ground field 
is more than in the road because they would lose themselves and uh, losing themselves completely they would lose consideration of any direction and like mad women they would run so this is how uddhav actually wanted to become wanted to get the uh, speck of dust from the lotus feet of the gopis therefore <coughs> narad muni considered that uh, that uddhav is the most qualified person to instruct this cowherd boy gop kumar narad muni made another very beautiful point he said uddhav in the association of the gopis uh, receiving gopis mercy he became so abs absorbed that he even forgot krishna and forgot to go back to vrindavan <laughs> i mean go back to dwarka and he stayed in vrindavan for two months although he was supposed to be there only to carry the message to the gopis a letter from krishna krishna was advising you know don't feel so depressed disappointed i am there and uddhava tried to explain why are you lamenting krishna is in your heart so krishna is there with you but then uh, he saw that all this uh, knowledge is not going to have any effect rather the gopis mood was uddhav uh, keep your knowledge in your pocket and let us be uh, don't interfere uh, because you do not know what we feel our feeling for krishna is so deep that our heart is not going to listen to any reasoning so <clears throat> narad narad uddhava received from the gopi such mercy that in their company he even forgot about the companionship of krishna so whatever he concludes about them and whatever he does or say will be altogether right so <clears throat> in this way narad muni considered that uddhava is the best person to advise gop kumar and saying that narad muni embraced gop kumar and immersed in the waves of ocean of love for godhead he trembled and wept and his hair stood on end he bit his tongue a tongue uncontrollably eager to keep speaking and he danced wonderfully and showed many symptoms of ecstasy and then narad muni anyway so let us just go because uh, we are yeah <clears throat> yeah so i'm just wondering where to start from and so that it becomes relevant prime cause of receiving love for krishna is krishna's mercy and uh, this aspect we have discussed earlier uh, do you all remember what is the prime cause of receiving love for krishna is krishna's mercy the prime cause of pure love for krishna <clears throat> is krishna's full mercy which is someone may which in someone may arise spontaneously and in someone else 
by gradual practice of devotional service. One develops that love by practicing the devotional service whose main ways are meditation and singing about the many braja pastimes of the Lord. That service becomes brilliant by Sankirtan of the Lord's most beloved holy names. So by, uh, again uh, is being pointed out that through Sankirtan one receives Braja Prem. So now you see why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave uh, the holy name. Uh, why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come? Namo Mahavadannaya Krishna Prema Pradayate He gives Krishna Prem. Now he came to give Krishna Prem. But how does one give get the Krishna Prem? How did he want to give Krishna Prem? Through the holy name. And this holy name is meant to be chanted. And we are seeing here what is the meaning of Sankirtan? The meaning of Sankirtan is one is chant the name of the Lord with all the love of your heart. Hey Govinda, hey Gopal, hey Gopinath, hey Jashoda Dulal. In this way, these are the names of Krishna. These are the names by which Krishna is addressed in Vrindavan. So, <clears throat> this Hare Krishna Mahamantra is actually uh, the names that of Krishna that are meant to be uh, chanted with all the love. And specially this holy name is so special even uh, beyond his name alone because this name is with Srimati Radharani. This name is not only Krishna but Krishna with Srimati Radharani. This Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, is actually addressing Krishna with Srimati Radharani, addressing Radha Krishna. So, and this name can be chanted congregationally. Collectively with many. Bahubhir Militwa. And this name uh, can be meditated upon in Japa. So that is the wonderful benediction of the holy name. And then the loving devotional service is far different from disciplines such as Karma, Gyan and Yoga. At every stage it is decorated by indifference to them and its root is dainya, dainya, humility. So what is the root hmm, of that uh, loving devotion is dainya. So here he pointed out that wise men define dainya as the state in which one always thinks oneself exceptionally incapable and low, even when endowed with all excellences. That in spite of being so qualified, one considers himself to be totally incapable and low. So this mood of dainna has been so wonderfully displayed by the Goswamis of Vrindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, told that to Sanatana Goswami that in spite of being most exalted you are considering yourself to be so low, so incapable. So that makes my heart melt. I cannot bear to see that humility in you. But that is the natural ornament of a devotee. There are many such examples 
in that respect that a tree when it doesn't have any fruit it stands erect but when the tree becomes laden with fruits it bows down so similarly a person who is truly qualified who is endowed with many many good qualities naturally become humble and this humbleness this humility can be displayed only through devotion to krishna dainna at his most exalted comes forth when prema pure love of god reaches full maturity as it did in the women of golok women of gokul when they were separated from krishna they felt oh we are so unqualified that's why krishna left us when doina fully matures prema unfolds without limit and so we see doina and prema acting in a relationship in which each is both cause and effect both are cause and effect for those who have prema the blazing conflagration of their agony is like the nectarian water of the jamuna and yet like the burning flames of a fire when one uh, experiences that prem then they feel as if they're burning in the middle of a forest fire or they feel as if sometimes they feel as if they are experiencing the cool waves of jamuna to them poison is like nectar to them poison is like nectar and nectar is like poison death is happiness and life but an expansion of misery they feel why why what is the use of being alive let me die so that is one what exp- one experiences when one ex- experiences that prema that prema is full of both the greatest ecstasy and the worst anguish when prema matures one inevitably acts from time to time in the ways of an utter madman <clears throat> and without such prem not even the nine kinds of devotional service to lord mukunda can bring real happiness indeed without prem the nine kinds of devotional service are like vegetables without salt <laughs> this huh devotional services without prem is like a food vegetable without cooked food without salt and elaborate meal without hunger scriptural study without understanding or gardens without fruits how can i adequately tell the nature of pure love of women of braja have for krishna then he is requesting if you ever meet the divine goddess radhika then you will see prem in person and if ever she speaks about prem only then can you hear the truth about it if you are able to understand it or should there ever be a full incarnation of sri krishna chandra to distribute kriya krishna prem or to experience the krishna prem of shrimati radhika you might be able to understand it so who is that personality that krishna came to distribute that prem and through him we will understand what this prem actually is without utter humility 
the pure love that leads to entrance into Golok will never arise. Without this humility, one will never be able to enter Golok. And until you attain that world, you will never be at peace. So he is telling Gokumar. What more, Lord Purushottam, who feels sympathy for the distress of others, will surely send you from Jagannath Puri to his own Gokul, the ornament of Sri Mathura, then why not just go there directly? <clears throat> there in Gokul, the pure devotees always feel humility, dainya, and pure love for the Lord. In that mood, they see the forests, rivers and hills as if an empty wilderness. Those devotees, their mouths filled with cries of lamentation, their hearts burning with absolute grief are always searching for their beloved. Then Narad Muni told Uddhav, you truly must have great affection for the residents of that land, for you have spoken your good advice to help this boy quickly achieve what he desires. You know the supreme greatness of that Brajabhumi. You left Lord Krishna, your worshipful, worshipable deity, and resided there for a long time. O glorious one, beloved of hero of Braja, please know that soon your purpose will be achieved. Long ago, greatly fortunate one, I concluded that this would happen. Narad Muni told Gop Kumar. Even when you came to Sri Vaikuntha, the Lord's abode of limitless, incomparable joy, and to his transcendental city of Ajodha, and in this city of Dwarka, even greater than both, your heart's distress only multiplied in a most unlikely way. On Swarga and the other planetary pla uh, material planets, you remain naive, even though seeing the lotus feet of your Lord. So you have been seeing, Narad Muni is telling Gop Kumar, that you are seeing your, the lotus feet of your Lord all along, but you could not actually make out its ultimate uh, form. So now go quickly to that most sweet Brajabhumi. Narad Muni is now telling Gop Kumar, go back to Brajabhumi, which enhances the fame and splendor of the earth. Go fulfill the desire you have held for so long. There, without delay, you will surely succeed in spiritual practice that will bring you to the brilliant world of a Boykuntha, to Golok. And at that time, uh, Uddhava noticed that before leaving, Gop Kumar was eager to take permission from Krishna of Dwarka, Dwarka Dish Krishna. So Uddhav told him that if you are going anywhere else, then there was a consideration of taking permission. But you are going to the same place. So there is, don't worry about taking permission because when one is going, one is actually remaining in the same place or going to the same place, then there is no need to take permission. If you are going anywhere else, the proper thing would have been to take permission from the Lord of the Jadavas. But that land of his is most dear to him. That Vrindavan is most dear to Krishna. Not even by direct service to the Lord here in Dwarka does the love arise that firmly develops if one merely, merely lives 
in the land of Braja. Therefore, I spent a long time in Braja Bhumi on the pretext of consoling the Lord's dear devotees who live there with nothing left but their lives. I am sure my Lord already knows your powerful desire. So he will personally bring you, his dear friend, to his dearest abode. Sensing that someone had taken me elsewhere, I then opened my eyes and saw that I had been brought to this grove. So Gopkumar, in this way, was trans for transmitted into Vrindavan with a wink of an eye from Dwarka, he came to Vrindavan. So thus ends the fifth chapter of part two of Srila Sanatan Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Ritam entitled Prema Love of God. Prem Love of God. So, <clears throat> we have just a few minutes left. If there are just a few questions, maybe I'll answer uh, three or four questions at the most. Oh, already so many questions are here. So, do, I don't think I'll be able to answer them. Shubhak Das, where is Shubhak Das? Um, Shubhak, okay. Uh, which Krishna kills the demons in Vrindavan? Dwarkadesh Krishna or Nanda Maharaja's son Krishna? It is the Vasudev Krishna who kills the demons. Nanda Maharaja's son doesn't kill any demons. Subham, your question is too long. I won't answer it now. Uh, Raghavendra Krishna Das from Guru Maharaj Dhanavat Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I request you kindly explain Jalim in me Keshigha Ghat of What is that Jalim? In Bengali he wrote something. Jalim. Jalim means oh, who deceives. So Krishna is a deceiver. Huh? He deceives his devotees in that way. <clears throat> Prahlada Priyadas. Thank you so much for uh, subtle and detailed narration of events with Gopkumar. Please kindly explain the Radha Tattva in brief. I don't have the time for that. Devashish Krishna Das. My question is from morning Srimad Bhagavatam class. As you mentioned in class, that one can accept spiritual aspect and leave the material aspect. Yeah, when you accept spiritual, then material aspect automatically goes. Parameshwari Radhika. Gurudev, as you mentioned, that Indra got so many eyes due to a curse. Uh, why did Indra got uh, curse? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you some other time. <laughs> we say that we got full satisfaction. Okay, Parameshri Radhika, remind me when I meet you, then I'll tell you about that. Okay, I can say briefly. Like, uh, Krishna molested uh, one lady. Uh, wife of a sage in uh, I'm sorry uh, Indra uh, molested and as a result of he was cursed that his whole body will become uh, the women uh, uh, sim uh, uh, part and that's how they became he got the eyes as if if Krishna is all attractive, then why some devotees attract towards expansion of Krishna? Uh, Shubhash, uh, one become attracted to Krishna because not fully understanding Brajendra Nandan Krishna's sweetness. 
in which rasa the creepers plants and other living entities are situated in vrindavan and how they relish that rasa their rasa is mainly uh, of uh, friendship and conjugal okay let's see shubham i can answer now <coughs> thank you for the wonderful class and sharing with us the sweetest pastimes of ratha jatra i understand from the class that we cannot enter golok vrindavan unless we forget that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead however if you look at the life of our exalted acharyas and their teachings we are constantly rem reminded that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead does this mean we will not be able to enter golok vrindavan because it does not seem possible to become forgetful of krishna's position as the supreme personality of godhead good question uh, good question shubham <coughs> the question is that we can't enter into vrindavan unless we forget that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead uh, so the forgetfulness that you're talking about is the forgetfulness due to ignorance where shubham okay so the, there is for, these are the instances or examples of forgetfulness out of ignorance but there is another kind of forgetfulness forgetfulness out of love hmm. like that forgetfulness is not like forgetfulness out of ignorance not knowing ha huh? forgetfulness of ignorance that is not knowing uh, but that forgetfulness is the forgetfulness out of love that forgetfulness is not the forgetfulness of ignorance for example the sun has become the prime minister it is not that that it is not that the mother doesn't know that she is he is the prime minister but does the mother treat him like a prime minister why not because of love huh? the love is superseding the position huh? like <clears throat> she knows but it doesn't matter all right so it is not that the brajavasis do not know that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead but to them it doesn't matter it doesn't matter their feeling is you may be the supreme personality of godhead or may not be the supreme personality of godhead who cares it doesn't matter what really matters is that you are my friend you are my son you are my lover so that is how the residents of vrindavan feel it doesn't matter even if you are not the so we are not loving you because you are the supreme personality of godhead we are loving you because we cannot help but love you we cannot stay without loving you so that is their feeling and that is why that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead doesn't matter to them that is the kind of forgetfulness that they experience in vrindavan that is the kind of forgetfulness one will experience when one develops his love for krishna in that loving relationship one will not treat krishna as the supreme personality of godhead but simply the object of his love okay thank you very much all glories to shila prabhupad gaur premanande hari hari